Right. Okay. Yep. So, um, <laughs> thanks for, for meeting Pauline. Mm -hmm. um, maybe we could just introduce ourselves. Um, so I'm I'm Jeff Pelham, and I'm responsible for the programs at PB Coaching, the training programs, the postgraduate, and also the uh, programs we run in in organisations. Mm -hmm. And I'm Pauline Clare, and I'm an executive coach and an associate of PB Coaching, and I'm the former Chief Constable of the Lancashire Constabulary. Okay, <laughs> so I've, I've asked to, to talk with you today, and <laughs> the, um, the the kind of context of this, I guess, is, is the courses we run, and that leadership is uh, at the heart of the, the courses, really, and, and uh, a, a key subject... Uh, that the people on the courses are interested in and are looking to uh, become coaches of people in leadership position. I suppose one thing to say is in terms of this notion of leadership, it's a complica complex word. So we're looking at it in terms of somebody who's got a senior role in an organization and they may actually be uh, the person who's the chief exec or, or so the person that, if you like at the top of the tree. Mm -hmm. And um, I'd like to talk to you really because, because, as you've said, you've had many you have many years as uh, as the person who was uh, running a, a very large organisation, um, and subsequently many years as a as a coach, both and a, a supervisor of coaches and a trainer of coaches. So you know from both sides of the coin uh, this stuff about. Uh, leadership and you know about coaching leaders mm -hmm. and also you know about in, in a sense what people who are developing as coaches might need to, to bear in mind uh, when they're coaching leaders so I'd just like to talk with you really about this and you know get some of your experience around this and so we can get sort of a deeper deeper grasp mm -hmm. so it's really as a, as a resource for the for the people on the course and anybody else who happens to be interested in listening okay. um, and I thought first it would be good to talk about leadership in general um, and then follow that with a sense of uh, what uh, people who are coaching leaders uh, need could, could usefully uh, know about uh, and the kind of challenges that are posed and so forth. Hmm. Is that, is that yep. okay? That sounds great. Thank okay. You. So maybe if we just start more about, you know, generally about leadership and uh, uh, I guess um, your thoughts about I mean, leadership's a complex subject there's books and books mm -hmm. written on it you can get lost in all the all the stuff that's written but what do you think is at the heart of leadership um you're quite right there is so much written about leadership in fact i think there's more written about leadership than any other subject but for me leadership is about who you are as a person and it's about being authentic and bringing yourself into your leadership positions so being authentic in terms of yourself and being authentic in terms of the way that you relate to people hmm. and the way that you relate hmm. to your organization hmm. so what is it how come that's the key then how come authenticity for you is the key in this well there are so many people who are in senior leadership positions who try and be something other than you know what they really are and actually it's it's as if they're performing a role and i think that can cause and create problems for them rather than being themselves you know with all the faults and um, areas for development but just appreciating who they are and working to the strengths uh, you know, for me, is really important. Hmm. I guess, I guess, because there's so much written, and anybody moving into that role, I guess we look, we look to get all the information, all the support, and I guess it's so easy to get lost in that, or maybe the organisation has got its own I don't know, leadership development uh, framework and competencies and and so forth. So, I'm just thinking it it could be really easy for a leader to get very tangled up yeah. in in all of that. So your sense is. That notion of be be true to yourself. Exactly. In all, you said yes. that with real, yes. real feeling. <laughs> well, I I do genuinely believe that, and you know, it's about playing to your strengths and about being honest with yourself, being mm. self-aware, and recognizing the areas that aren't, you know, uh, mm. that you need to develop. Mm. Yeah. Okay. 
Um, I'm quite. In, I'm really interested in, in the whole area of the the leader and the culture of the organisation. Mm. Um, and I'm wondering. It's, it's often said that the the uh, that the organisation reflects the personality of the leader. And I'm guessing often the aspects of themselves that they might not be so aware of. Mm. Just. <laughs> does, does that ha what do you make of that notion? I, I totally agree. Um, I've got to say that uh, I honestly believe that the Lancashire Constabulary, when I was the Chief Constable, did take on many of my uh, personality characteristics and values. Not surprisingly, because of course, you know, that was what I was advocating. And also, that was the way I was behaving. So there was a consistency between what I was saying uh, about the way I wanted the uh, organisation to be and my own behaviours. Mm. So I, I do believe that mm. that can happen, you know, mm. very strongly, that mm. the organisation will take on the personality mm. of, you know, the most senior person, mm. be that good uh, characteristics or, mm. you know, not so helpful. Because as you're speaking, I'm thinking, of course, that the leader was so much in the spotlight and mm. people pay great attention to everything that's said yes. and the way, the way they act mm -hmm. and, and so on. And also, as you're speaking, I'm thinking, that going back to authenticity, mm. the, way, the way you said it, it was as if you, uh, you took, you, you were mindful, you took care to uh, behave in the way that you, uh, in, in your values. To mm. I'm just, I'm just thinking that um, that must be quite hard to do under the sort of pressures and often in our, you know, the, the behaviours of a leader might not line up with the way they, how, you know, how they, what they explicitly say. Mm. You, you're right. Um, you know, it's so easy to publish words in a in a strategic document and behave mm. in a different way. But for me, one of the important behaviours that a leader needs to show is consistency. Consistency between what's being said and what's yeah. being done. And the thing is, if there isn't consistency there, then that doesn't assist with the uh, you know lines of communication, and also it interferes with trust. Yes. So how can you be trusted if you're saying one thing and doing something yeah. else? I, I'm, 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 I'm thinking <laughs> this it, it, it sounds, uh, it, it almost sounds straightforward as you say it, but actually I'm guessing in reality it's far from that, with all the pressures and, uh, uh, you know, speaking to different people and what you can share at one time, uh, you know, appropriate as a leader, how to how to steer a course through all the, the uh, pressures and the, circumstances that you have to be that you're part of mm. but I, I think um, you know when, when the uh, initial strategy is drawn up then including a section on the characteristics of the culture mm. that are important to help you deliver what you're there to do operationally is critical in this and I think it will be very unwise to include values and beliefs and standards and ways mm. of behaving that didn't fit, mm. you know, with my my own mm. standards. Mm. So there is something about me that mm. will be woven mm. into, you mm. know, that strategic document. So actually, it would be, you know, it was easy for me right. to behave in consistent ways. Yeah. But but then it also requires quite a lot of self awareness and awareness of the impact that you have on other people. Mm. Because you're quite right. I mean, if you weren't to be consistent, then someone will be very mm. quick to point mm. it out to you. It's really easy to write these documents, though, isn't it? Mm. As uh, uh, almost, th you know, the, wor the words are there that just to be used, mm. if you like, that without the really, you know, all the, all the value words, that they're, they're almost, uh, I don't know, you can almost get a computer sometimes just to list them uh, about integrity, or, but that without really owning them. So I guess the hard work goes in re really owning those uh, those documents and, re and really meaning what's 
what's in them. Yeah, absolutely. And a lot of documents are produced, you know, to show to the auditors yeah. or whoever, and then they get put in the second drawer <laughs> in the desk on the yeah. left hand side and they never see the light of day again. Yeah. But actually, what we did in Lancashire was we produced a document that then guided our activities right. and, and set the framework for the behaviours. Right. So they they become a real reference point. Absolutely. Where, which you can ho hold yourself to account, yeah. really. And yes. Uh, but more than that, to guide yourself, I guess, in difficult circumstance or, or whatnot. Exactly. So do you think it's... Culture change is really hard work, I guess. Mm -hmm. uh, people have got ingrained habits. People just do what they always do. Uh, and, and often these are... Oh, they're, they're implicit, they're tacit, people just do this and to actually get people to change what they normally and routinely do and how they think and, and how they view the world is such a big challenge mm -hmm. so do, do you think it's possible for a leader to uh, consciously and explicitly set out to uh, change the culture and be successful in that or, and and how might they do that? There's a lot in there, isn't there? Gosh, <laughs> there is a lot in there. I should have broken it up. <laughs> but anyway, there you go. Um, the thing is, it, it is possible, but you can't do it on your own. I think what is important is for the leader to be very clear about the vision that they have for the organisation and to state very clearly what type of organisation they want to create. But, you know, they're not going to do it on their own. So, the, the, for me, the key is to involve as many people as possible. People from different ranks, as they were in the police service, different grades from police staff, so that there is a feeling of involvement. Hmm. And, and um, what we didn't do is we didn't draw up a strategy for culture change but we knew that the changes we were going to bring about uh, by other means, uh, for example, financial uh, devolution, hmm. would empower people to right. make decisions. Right. So we were very conscious all the time of the impact of all the strategic planning that we did uh, in terms of how it would impact on the culture. Hmm. Okay. Of time, uh, what strikes me is the... Um the tension between where I started, which was about how you know, we've all got aspects of ourselves that we're not so aware of, um, and and how that can influence the culture, and does actually, I and mean, I believe that it does permeate, but also a more explicit uh, seeking to change, and uh, how to, how to manage in all of that. Um, I guess I guess if you've if you've put it out. That you've got as clear as you can about the change you want to make and uh, you, you've got people on board with it um, I guess the authenticity bit is the heart of it again about just mm. really trying to be clear and open a, a, about how you're going about things it is and it is about using lots of empathy so putting yourself in the shoes of the people who you are asking hmm. to come on this journey with you hmm. and recognizing you know the doubts that they will have hmm. and the confusion and the you know sort of reluctance and actually being open about that and talking about hmm. it and encouraging and explaining hmm. you know the reasons why we need to change hmm. and encouraging them to challenge your thinking hmm. Because for, for me, accountability works both ways. Mm. You know, I think it's important for me as a leader to explain to, you know, the most junior member of staff mm. what I'm thinking and why I'm thinking that way. Mm. So you create an atmosphere where people are feeling involved, where they feel that they can genuinely challenge, you know, without uh, mm. reprisal. I'm interested in you put empathy at the heart of it, this. Yeah. Um, I don't know why, but it's not a thing I normally associate with leadership. <laughs> I don't know why that is. Yeah. Uh, mm. But you, you're seeing it as a, a, a key part in this, to really understand how other people are viewing this and, and, and so on. Absolutely. I mean, for me, it's crucial, because unless you understand how people are feeling, you know, when massive change is being suggested, mm. then how would you know what to say? Mm. And how would you know how to say it and when to say mm. it? Mm. So for me, you know, mm. it is absolutely critical. Mm. 
So yours isn't my way or the highway approach to No, it's definitely not. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Definitely not. Okay. No. Uh, because of my background, I'm always intrigued by what we might term the psychological mm -hmm. uh, background and context to this. And my sense is that the person invested with uh, a leadership role, they're also invested with it's, it's a it's a it's a role those roles around power, mm -hmm. authority, and uh, this this tends to draw uh, reactions from people. Uh, that's my hunch. Uh, I'm just checking in with myself really and realizing that uh, there's something different when the when the person who's the leader is in the room. And I wondered if what your experience is around this, whether it's something that you experienced. It is, and I've got to say that I'm a person who is uh, very uh, prepared to accept m the responsibility that goes with the role, but is also equally prepared to share the power. Hmm. And so, for me, I found it slightly uncomfortable at times when I would walk into a room of, you know, fairly senior personnel, hmm. and they would stand up because right. that was part of the way that the previous regime had, had expected right. and, and I spent quite a bit of time encouraging people not to do it because actually I didn't feel I needed it. Right, okay mm -hmm. and um, I'm, I'm guessing that there was sometimes a, 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 some challenge in actually managing people's, that that's the global thing isn't it but I can mm. imagine people having more individual personal reactions to you mm. that's something to do with how they are around leaders. Is, yes. Is that does that is that sort of stuff happen? And of course, yeah, of course it happens, and you get attributed with all sorts of uh, you know um, statements that you may or may not have said. People have certain expectations yeah. about the way that you'll behave. Yeah. You know, there is an awful lot of stuff that gets sort of put onto you because you are in a senior leadership position. Most of which probably isn't true. But, you know, often you can be put on a pedestal as well. Yeah. And you have a label around yeah, you yeah. which has got leader on. Yeah. And I would really rather just throw the label off yeah. and have people see me as a human being mm. who's there to, you know, work with mm. the staff to get the very best out of them. But my hunch is you can't just throw it off. No. That it's, it's there. It is. And... Uh, I don't know what the I don't know what the follow up question is, but it's something mm. like how 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 is that in I got almost the impression that there's there's you and there's and there's the role mm. and there's something about how do you inhabit that and be be the authentic person maybe there's not an answer to this. Well, I think uh, yes, you're quite right. People are always going to see me or always see me as the chief, but then what I would really be working hard to achieve is for them to see me as a human being, mm. someone that they could engage mm. with, mm. that they could have a conversation mm. with. So how did you do that then? How did you, it's almost like push past, whilst taking full responsibility of the role, mm. pushing past this to really meet people? It, it's really very much about using coaching skills, although I probably didn't label it in that way in those days. But it is about f being fully present, right. about r really listening, right. about asking questions and being very interested in the person that I was talking to and feeling that there was an engagement and, and a contact with them. Isn't that interesting? Yes, very interesting. Yeah. But I've only labelled it this way. Yeah you know, since I finished. But people have, have actually given me feedback, you know, when I was the chief, that they came in to talk about A and ended up talking about, you know, B <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and actually sharing information with me that they'd no intentions of right. sharing. Which so I think is an indication that they felt fairly comfortable. It's I'm just noticing that theme that's around for me of authenticity again. It feels like mm. it's about really meeting somebody. Yes. And you are the chief, but you're 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 really wanting to make make contact mm. with somebody. Yes. And as you say really listen to them, mm. really understand their point of view. I get I guess whilst not letting go of your own. Mm. Um, I'm making eye contact and also, you know, um, proving that I was listening by, you know, repeating or reflecting. Mm. 
Fuck. Mm. Those good interpersonal yeah. skills. Absolutely. <laughs> it can't be that simple. <laughs> Well, but I, and I guess it isn't. I guess in high-pressured situations, if people are angry with you or they're mm. they're disappointed or all yep. they've got different agendas, mm. I get it. I guess it isn't to hold. It isn't easy to hold to that. Really, trying to keep engaged, be easy to dismiss people or um, you know mentally dismiss them or whatever. For me, what what I learned was that um, to be aware of how I experienced certain people. And when, when I was with someone, wh- when I was with someone where I was experiencing aggression, hmm. the, what I noticed was that the more I tried to put myself in their position, hmm. the easier it became right. to think of a way of, you know, yeah. working with them or asking them questions. Yeah, interesting. Yes. So empathy for me needs to be really turned up and demonstrated when I was working with someone who yeah. I found difficult or, right. or could label as a difficult person. And that's not easy to do. I'm just I'm just checking it in for myself and that, mm. that's when it's so easy to go into the, the other positions like mm. just labelling them or, yes. or uh, dismissing what they're saying without really listening and, uh, and, and, and so on. Mm. Find it, finding ways of managing them. <laughs> yeah. That's exactly it. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, it's really, really interesting. Mm. Okay, um, I'm um, the question that seems to be around quite a bit is about the the role of women a, in uh, leadership positions, especially uh, leadership positions in large organisations. And so I'm wondering whether you think that there is. Uh, something particular to pay attention to or particular challenges that that women have when they're in uh, en- entering into or in senior leadership positions mm-hmm. I, I my immediate reaction is I want to say all oh, lack of women in senior positions well, yes yep. uh, exactly which probably is 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 part of it mm-hmm. isn't it and it says, is. so, says something about the, the, the cultures the circumstances especially the culture I'm thinking yes absolutely and um, I, I think when you know when I'm working with women um, coaching them now I am aware of the organizational context you know what is valued and what is appreciated in, in the organization mm. and you know I, I, I will get a sense of the leadership style that, that dominates and then I can then think about how that will impact on the person I'm working with right and whether the person I'm working with, uh, my coachee, has had to change the behaviours mm. to fit in. Mm. And that, for me, um, can create massive problems, particularly for women who change behaviours to be more like the male colleagues. Right. Because deep down inside, actually, there is a, a misfit. It, it doesn't feel right, but yet they are outwardly displaying behaviours. Right so that they do fit in right okay so if if you're coaching uh, uh, a woman in a senior position it's as if you you're consciously paying attention or your background awareness is around what what kind of culture are they in yes. how might they having to, to adapt themselves mm-hmm. in that yes and of course um, for me what, what one of the most common uh, coaching agenda items is confidence or lack of self-confidence mm. and what I've noticed is a lot of women need to feel that they have got every um, you know skill in place and right. every competency right. up to full strength before they apply for you know the next job and why why do you think that is so um, because well I'm, I'm not sure that they're all perfectionists because that isn't the case but I I just think that this is a characteristic that women, hmm. um, you know, display that they they want to get it right. Yeah. Whereas a lot of men, in my yeah. experience, are more prepared to give it a go yeah. and will apply for a job, yeah. you know, knowing that they don't have the competency, but are more prepared to okay. wing it, you know, when yeah. they go for the interview. If I could use that expression. Yeah. yeah. Okay. I'm just checking out about the, the thoughts of that in coaching and uh, so so are you are you sort of proactive in a way perhaps in raising 
some some of the issues that the coach she may not have raised for herself will you will you be proactive in raising awareness or just exploring a bit these kind of subject areas absolutely i will be proactive in terms of um asking you know what's stopping you yeah. for a, a, you know applying for it now and um the, the other thing is that there are people who believe, women, who believe that they should apply for a job. And I can tell when I'm working with them that there seems to be some resistance around. Mm. And often when I check it out, I find that it's been someone else's idea. Right. And so a question I often ask is, if you saw this job advertised in the Guardian supplement or, mm. you know, the Times educational supplement, would you have applied for it? Hmm. Yeah. Or on the internet, of course, these days. Right. Yeah. Okay. Okay. We, we we said earlier that there's been lots um, published around coaching. That there's sort of authors, there's frameworks, there's mm. various approaches. Um, is there any of that that kind of literature that that you uh, that's been you've valued that you found hope helpful to you? Uh, that are kind of good resources for you mm. on the subject of leadership yeah. in particular the book that I use regularly and often give a copy to my clients of is the new leaders by Daniel Goleman okay because a lot of the behavioral issues that arise from the coaches undertaking 360 mm. are emotional intelligence right behaviors you know competencies really that aren't up to scratch right so you know sharing a copy of the competency framework with them and sharing something about the six different leadership mm. styles mm. I find is really helpful to you know raise their awareness to mm. their own style of leadership mm. and their level of competency because mm. what's interesting there of course is they're saying that there isn't a particular style it, it's it's about being able to flex between Exactly. Uh, the various styles. Yes. So, we, would that mean that you sort of put emotional intelligence as a at, at the heart of this? Then mm. I, I think uh, being self-aware is really important for leaders, and you know we can't change anything mm. we're unaware of. And so, for me, emotional intelligence does provide a useful framework for thinking about right. you know what's what's happening, um, you know, in a in a conversation mm. with mm. someone. Okay. Any anything else? Any other? Um, the other person um, I uh, refer to is um, Blanchard, right? Ken Blanchard, um, and the situational leadership model. Mm -hmm. Because often, I mean, I know it's been around for a long time, mm. but for me, it stood the test of time. A lot of leaders have, are either very directive, you know, always sitting on someone's shoulder and mm. checking that they've done mm. what needs to be done, mm. or they totally delegate or mm. abdicate mm. and there is a place in between for mm. coaching and support mm. and that fits very nicely with the spectrum of coaching skills mm. as well mm. what about the authenticity mm. is at the heart of this yeah. view is there anything any authors or anything that support that for you that have been important for you yeah the, the author who um, I would look at is Graham Lee right because he talks about authenticity in leadership yeah and the other thing he talks about uh, in coaching is you know the importance of working uh, on personal issues yes. and psychological issues yes. as well as practical issues yeah uh, and for me if we miss out the psychological yes. aspect of coaching then yeah. You know, we may as well go home. Yeah. Um, for me, you would only be scratching the surface. Yeah. In my own personal interest in that book, it's the only place I've seen where attachment theory yeah. is uh, discussed and put at the heart of uh, leadership. Yeah. And so, uh, yeah, so I, I find that really mm. interesting book. Um, just, I, I think attachment theory is one of the great unexplored areas, really, that are around for coaching. Okay, thanks. So let's um, so that's a bit about leaders in general. I'm interested uh, in shifting now more to the focus on coaching, although we've already started there some some places. And um, I, I, I don't know why, but I've, I, my first thoughts is about coaching 
uh, leadership being a lonely place and uh, that's often said was that your is that your was that your experience mm. i i think leadership is a lonely place and it was for me and i'm sure it is for many people but whether they're prepared to admit mm. it um, i'm not sure and the thing is you know from time to time because it is a lonely place we all need someone that we can talk um, you know issues or problems through mm. with and what I used to do uh, used to go home and attempt to have conversations with <laughs> my husband <laughs> I say attempt because what happens is that when you do discuss um, matters with someone who's close to you then they could be, and you know often become agitated themselves mm. so they're 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 too involved they are too involved yes. yeah yeah Okay, so um, I wonder about your first experience of coaching and what, what, what that did for you. Yep, well what happened was because my husband was getting uh, too involved, I decided that I would look elsewhere for support and I knew that a couple of members of my own top team already had coaches and so I asked them how they found a coach and I followed a similar process and I invited someone to come in and uh, you know I sort of interviewed them mm. because I think it is really important that you you know you find someone that you can trust yeah so doing a chemistry check is yeah. is very important yeah and so I then um, you know embarked on a period of coaching which I found invaluable I'm just noticing uh, uh, that what you put as a headline in all of that was trust yeah uh, you can have you, you might other people might say you need to check out someone's credentials and their experience and so on and so forth which I guess is part of the background but you put trust as the as the key thing above all else I That's, did yeah and I did that intentionally because for me trust is key hmm. you know uh, the relationship that you enjoy hmm. with the person that who is coaching you is you know the probably one of the most important factors along with your willingness mm. as the coachee to engage mm. and you know when you think about the type of issues that senior people will bring Absolutely. to a coaching then you know it is important that you can trust that person yeah. so I use my coach as a confidential sounding board yes because I engaged in coaching towards the end of my seven years mm. I didn't need help with strategic planning or you mm. know how to run the the mm. business what I was more interested in was looking at the personal and the psychological mm. uh, aspects of what was going on for mm. me so, so that's what that was the most that's what you got from this primarily a, a safe trusting place to to uh, air your thoughts and, and explore those kind of because because often it might I mean I don't know whether it's different between someone new in leadership or mm -hmm. but uh, often you can't, might think that people are going to want help with strategic planning or, or mm -hmm. so on and so forth but that wasn't the wasn't the, the case for you no I think if someone's newly appointed in it to a leadership position then they probably would want to talk through you know where they're going to take the organization or the company yeah. in the next few years they may well want help on yeah. um, you know networking and influencing yeah. and, and those type of uh, issues but then uh, for me I think the agenda changes mm. and dealing with difficult relationships mm. having conversations mm. that are authentic mm. or meaningful mm. or difficult mm. um, and you know what legacy you want to leave behind right and you know what you want to do when you finish right I think those are all important topics that so executives I, would want to look at as you're as you're speaking I suppose it's an obvious statement might be important to notice so that leaders at different stages in their development need need different things from from the coaching they do yeah yes okay well I wonder what it is that attracted you to coaching because that was your that was the move you made really wasn't it Into it was yeah well I'd had a really positive experience of being coached myself and uh, people and their development had always been very important to me 
So when I was the chief, no mm. matter what change we were making mm. within the constabulary, I would always think about people mm. and making sure they were informed and involved mm. and you know trained properly. And so people and and their development was always important. And so what I decided to do when I finished was to take up a career where I could help people to achieve their full potential. Right. And coaching, of course, you know, were sat very well with that. Well, it sounds like it sits very well with you. It does. Yeah, your whole, it does. your whole style, yeah. uh, and, and, and so forth. Mm -hmm. uh, sounds like the style you actually had, in a way, as you say, when you, when you uh, were in the in that position. Um, we may, we may have already covered this, but d if, if generally, what do you think somebody in a leadership position needs from a coach? I think they need um, a confidential sounding board, they need someone who um, can provide some support mm -hmm. and challenge, mm -hmm. uh, they also need someone who can provide feedback because I think the more senior you are in an organisation the more the messages get filtered out. Right, yeah. So, you know... People don't speak no. exactly. <laughs> As they might. No, exactly. That's the, that's the thing. So you're left wondering mm. how effective you are. Right. And and actually, as a coach, we can experience firsthand what it's right. like to be with that leader. And I think we have a responsibility to share some of the way that that mm. person, that leader, impacts on us. So you you'd give them some actually like here and now. What 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 might you say to them? I'm, I'm just curious what. What sort of feedback might be you offer them? If I become aware, and um, and this uh, does happen very often, of the way that someone's impacting on me, mm. I would always check out first of all whether that's my mm. stuff mm. that I'm feeling, you know, agitated about mm. maybe, um, and if if I believe that it is coming from the person, I I might give them feedback about. Um, you know, checking out they're okay with me mm. feeding back how I'm experiencing them. Mm. So if, if I ask someone a question and they give me a very long-winded answer, then the chances are that they'll be doing that when they're meeting with right. their board. Right. And so I might ask, I might feed back something like, I notice when I ask you this particular question, you gave me a very long answer, which... Um, actually went off on avenues and you know I felt didn't really answer the question mm. that I asked so I I mean I would I would feed it back in in a very um, helpful way mm. would you share that the impact on yourself is say so I, I get confused listening to you or yeah that's some, exactly some, that's the bit like I that. missed yeah thank you yeah, yeah. I, I would I would share with them so I'm, I've either switched off yeah. or I've got lost. Yeah. So this is what we talk about in terms of use of self. Exactly. It's that. Um, uh, and, and I'm just thinking, you, it, I guess it takes a certain kind of confidence in yourself if you're, if you're coaching a senior person, maybe of a large organisation, <laughs> to, to, to do that. Um, that's just my hunch. You've got to, you've got to, you've got to feel uh, secure in yourself yes. to, to make those kinds of... Uh, interventions. Mm. I, I, I don't think it, it makes any difference whether they are the most senior of person mm. or a middle manager. Mm. I think it takes courage, whoever they are, yeah. you know, to, to do it particularly for the first time. Yeah. But then I would encourage, you know, potential coaches to really try it. Because for me, it's been the turning point so, so often right. when I have used data that I've picked up myself right. because it's, it's evidence that's staring the leader in the face yeah and people I guess you say people don't usually give them that no, feedback no they don't they value their job <laughs> but also we don't do it in ordinary life do we we've, no, we we've almost learnt that it's not polite or so we don't attend to it but you're saying it feels like you're saying that this is almost the most mm. important place am I overstating that or is that no, no I think it is uh, because um the, the thing it uh, just let me think about the answer to this one um, I, th I think in the absence of uh, any other feedback 
they they will be looking for evidence they very often want evidence mm, right. of their impact and because I have experienced it firsthand yeah. and I've been prepared to share it yeah. then there is a real um, emotional engagement that comes as a, right. as a consequence of that that I've taken them to a place yeah. and, and or they've come with me to a place yeah. that feels as if it's it's very different from that superficial level yeah. and with that emotional engagement comes you know more trust yes. and a real yes. uh, development of the relationship yes. because I, I've been genuinely honest with them that's uh, authenticity yeah, again. authenticity I know what you mean it, you get those moments I'm, I'm I'm just thinking in ordinary everyday coaching, you get those moments and it is transforming. It is. The agenda shifts, uh, it, it just goes to a much more profound level, doesn't it? It does. It's fascinating. Mm. But it does take courage. It does. It takes courage, doesn't it? Mm. And, it and self awareness. It does. But, but when you've done it, and then you, you know, what I would do is encourage people to reflect on yeah. how they actually felt and the way that the person reacted yeah. because often we avoid doing these things for fear of yeah. you know the person finding yeah. it confrontational yeah but if your intention is a good one yeah. which is to help the person yeah. to to raise their awareness yeah. to something about their behavior that no one else has been prepared yeah. to share then that to me is a really good yeah. intention I know what you're talking about and I think I mean it feels risky at the time yeah it does but my sense of it is uh, if it's done with good intention mm. and it's done uh, w with a sense of this is this is just your experience and uh, so forth that it mostly lands all right mm. and it and it as you say it mostly shifts shifts things into a new gear it does that's really fascinating stuff isn't it mm. and so this is really thinking uh, for people who say are on our courses and just mm -hmm. starting up as uh, uh, coaching and coaching senior people and I wonder if there's any issues that regularly come up uh, in, in coaching leaders that maybe we haven't we've covered some of them but wonder is that is that a sensible question it's a very sensible question and uh, the the uh, answer that immediately springs to mind is having difficult conversations right you know it, it happens so often that people uh, know that they need to speak to a colleague or right. a member of the board or the chairman or, yeah. or whoever but they avoid it because they are afraid of the consequences right so having difficult conversations is a regular topic as is uh, building resilience so say some more about that building resilience well I think um, because of the vast amount of change that organizations mm. and individuals are going through at the moment mm. then helping people to develop ways of being more resilient to that change mm. is, is important and that includes you know helping them with their self-confidence self-belief right. self-confidence because I just try, I wonder about unpacking that notion yes. of resilience and what it would actually mean as a coach what mm. what might you be attending to what might you be inquiring into yes so uh, I will be looking at uh, you know the self um, the self-confidence which is to do with their activities you know the behaviors yeah. the uh, self esteem which is the way they feel yeah. about themselves and then the self-concept which is the way they think about themselves right okay and about support would you be is that part of it about it where, is. Where, where they're getting their support from and very often you, you mean you've hit on a really important point because well, I think a lot of people when they're in senior positions mm. believe that they need to do whatever needs to be done on their own mm. and you know when I ask where do you get your support mm. from invariably they say you know well I just manage on my own mm. So you might help them find ways of not managing on their own. Absolutely, challenge yeah. them, you yeah. know, in terms of the, the thinking around the fact that they are expected to do everything on their own. Yeah. Do you offer more? S I'm just wondering about. Mm. You have the sessions, and do you offer a contact between sessions? Uh, I do. 
I do offer contact between sessions, but I've got to say, people very rarely take it up. Very rarely. I'm just thinking that's very symptomatic. It is. <laughs> yeah, they're too busy getting on with the job yeah. very often, and rarely do they stop and think about themselves and their own needs. Mm. And it's so apparent from you know my point of view, coming into the organisation and, and really exploring what's going on with someone, that they put themselves at the bottom of their to-do list. <laughs> that's a nice way of putting it. Mm. Yeah. So the image I'm getting is a, a sense that leaders often feel like they're the one that holds it all together. Mm. Uh, they're almost like the prime mover, but they don't need any anyone to support them and help them. Mm. Uh, and I guess that's what the I guess that's a key part of what the coach is offering. Is Absolutely, it, is that uh, it's almost like a legitimate place. It is uh, once it's been uh, agreed to do mm. it. And, you know, being sensitive enough to the needs of the leader to find out how much support they yeah. do need and how much challenge they need yeah. and to apply both of those in appropriate amounts. Yeah. Because I know at the time that I engaged my coach that actually I needed more support because what I was doing was challenging myself. Right in a way that right. felt a bit unfair to me as I think about it yeah. now. So what I was looking for was more support, which I actually received. That's really interesting because I've oft, I've heard it said that what leaders need is challenge. You know, you've got to challenge them, challenge their thinking. That's what they're looking for, and I guess it could be it could go in a kind of a bit of a machismo mm. frame of mind as the coach, and think I've got to prove I've got to prove myself. Mm. Uh, but you're saying something different. It's about ga gauging what's actually and really needed. It is in that situation. It is. I mean, I guess as a coach going in there there is a real sense of I've got to prove myself and I've got to do something to demonstrate my worth here they're paying me maybe large sums of money um, so I've got to be you know maybe bullish about it or some such like that you're pulling a face as I'm saying this <laughs> <laughs> well I'm, I'm sure that there will be coaches who definitely would uh, feel you know that they need to prove themselves and that I've experienced that myself yeah. why wouldn't I yeah and, you know, to uh, look at myself when I've um, finished and reflect on how helpful mm. was that. Mm. But the best way, of course, is to check out with the person that you've been working with mm. rather than work it out yourself mm. and maybe fill gaps with information mm. that actually are untrue mm. or, or put yourself mm. down. And as you're speaking, I'm thinking the role of supervision here mm. for the coach, yes. I guess, is... Uh, a central piece absolutely um, yeah to, to because because they're trying to make sense of really difficult stuff yeah. and, and even things like needing to prove yourself I guess mm. it's a, a place for you, for the coach to take themselves to really mm. get themselves clear and you know get back to themselves the it sense. is and often you know when we're new to coaching we pick stuff up but we're never really sure what it is yeah. we know there's something going on but uh, you know, having someone who is more senior and, um, and probably better qualified mm. and more experienced mm. than us to talk these things through with is very helpful. In fact, for me, it's essential. Mm. Okay. Um, so you've you've supervised many uh, coaches. You you've seen people uh, uh, in, you know training courses and and and, and this conversation is really for people who are in this kind of you know often starting up and uh, what do you think the challenges are particularly for people as they're starting their coaching and they're starting to coach senior people I, I think the biggest challenge is being a bit so star struck yeah or a bit fearful yeah of um, authority yeah and again that might be something that would be worth exploring with a supervisor yes you know is it something which is um you know just a one-off or is it something which is um, an emerging pattern yes because uh, what i would encourage you know new coaches is, is to be empathetic to really work out what that person actually needs at that time mm. you know what is the purpose of mm. the coaching mm. and to work with them to form an agenda mm. but to be flexible enough 
because the, the thing is, when someone's in a senior position, they may not want to stick rigidly to an agenda, mm. in my experience. Mm. They may well want to discuss whatever mm. the issue is mm. that's facing them you mm. know, head on at mm. that particular time. So what I'm uh, really struck by this, it's, it's, it's almost like a personal challenge about being starstruck, mm. about being in the presence of somebody who I don't know, they might be in a swish office or something yes. like that, but a, re a real reputation, mm. um, how, how to, the expression I've got coming to mind is get back to yourself mm. yes. and, and be yourself, because it's the authenticity thing again, uh, just to really properly meet that person mm. and not get filled with interference about this, probably knows, knows, knows more than me or mm. whatever. whatever. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, to think about what you might do to take more control of the situation. So if they are seeing you in a swish office, then maybe suggesting a, a different venue. Yes. Which feels more equal yes. and more neutral. Yes. Maybe of assistance to both of you. Yes. Yes. And maybe there might be something about being, um, when, when told the person's really busy and, mm -hmm. you know, can't, haven't got time to travel, maybe just taking some authority there as a coach. And yes. Um, saying it, just putting it strongly that it would be good to be in a different venue or something like that. Mm. And that is a, a type of challenge, isn't it? You it know, is. which, which the it person is. may well not be used to yes. receiving, but yeah. actually, you know, that will get them to think about yeah. their own approach to yeah. the way that they handle yeah. people. Okay, so the last question, which I think kind of connects with that, is: Do you think it's do you think it's necessary to have been a leader? to coach a leader? I don't think it's necessary. I think it can be helpful because there'll be certain clients who would choose someone on the basis that they had previous leadership experience themselves. But for me, um, that doesn't necessarily mean that because they've got previous experience mm. that they will be the best coach. Mm. For me, um, it is about um, making sure that you've You've been on a recognised coaching programme, that you've got sound qualifications and that you are supervised. Mm. Um, and in fact, um, I, I think that there is a downside to having been you know, in a leadership position. And that's why I always find it interesting to ask the people I work with why they chose me to coach okay. them. Because it may well be they have an expectation that you will... Uh, mentor them or right. make suggestions right. and that they can draw on your knowledge and, yes. and experience. Yes. Now there may well be an opportunity within coaching to share uh, an example of what you did yes. but, but then you know that needs to be closely mm. monitored. So there are mm. advantages and disadvantages mm. of, of having been in a leadership mm. position but the shorter answer for me is no, it isn't necessary. Mm. I'm intrigued by your answer because as you're speaking, I'm thinking, yeah, I can see that. Um, I mean, there's a credibility thing, mm. I guess, uh, that this person's been in a position, they know what it's all about, but how it, how it could also shift almost a reversal so that people are looking for mentoring and, yes. and uh, the temptations to get draw, drawn into that. Mm. Yeah, okay. Mm. Is there any... I've come to the end of the kind of questions I've mm -hmm. got. Is there anything else that you just want to, uh, before we conclude, or do you think we've covered it? Thinking if there is anything else. Um, from a coaching perspective. There is nothing immediately coming to mind. Hmm. Okay. Yeah. Well, let's uh, draw it to a close. And then mm. just thanks, thanks for that. I really, really enjoyed that. Mm. Likewise. Yeah. Mm. Okay.